Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Our guest today is my great friend, Jeffrey Tucker. He is the founder and president of the Brownstone Institute. He is also a formal editorial director of the American Institute for Economic Research. Thank you for joining us again, sir. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. A lot has happened since we last talked. <laughs> yeah, a lot has happened. It's only been a month or so. And, and you know, there's yeah. so many things that's happening in the world. You're looking at Middle East right now. Wars are breaking out. And yeah. there's so much uncertainty in the world, not just uh, on like what you see on the news, but even financially and in the actual uh, economy. What are you seeing now that's changed since the last month, Jeffrey? And, and uh, you know, how, you know, how fragile is the world economy right now? The big picture of this whole thing is that the world went nuts uh, starting in March of 2020. Uh, almost every government in the world locked their citizens in their homes and suspended travel, trade around the world collapsed, governments went crazy printing money and spending uh, unconscionable amounts of, of resources and uh, with, with printed money, uh, leading to uh, mass inflation, a demoralization, collapse of public health, collapse of education. Uh, all standards of of public finance just thrown out the window. All standards of the rule of law mm -hmm. were thrown out the window, and this led to mass uh, civilizational uh, demoralization. Uh, not to mention the fact that you know, the governments of the world have explicitly divided their population, set people against each other. You're essential, you're non-essential. You've got a surgery that we can do. You've got a diagnosis that you're just going to have to wait. You're wearing a mask. You're a good guy. You're not wearing a mask. That makes you a dissident. You're from red state. That's bad. A blue <laughs> state. That's good. Uh, and then it got worse with the vaccines. You accept the shot. That makes you a good citizen. If you uh, don't accept the shot, that makes you anti-science. So there is this kind of divisive element in the air combined with uh, a sort of um, a nihilistic uh, rejection of all standards of civility. And, you know, looking back at it, if somebody had asked me... Um, uh, two years ago, how does all this end? I would have said, I don't know. Maybe we'll just kind of <laughs> soft land it. And the person said, I don't think so. I think it's going to end in uh, war. Right. I, I would have been shocked by that. But now that it's happened, I'm not entirely shocked. Right. This kind of upheaval usually ends in war. And uh, There's no war on the scale anywhere in the world that isn't preceded by some other domestic upheaval or some other uh, kind of precipitating event that basically dismantles all standards of civility. And I think that's what we're looking at. So underneath that is, of course, the uh, growing economic crisis. And I assume that you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we want to uh, get into about, you know, what's what's happening right now with all the deficits. You see there's $33 trillion in debt for, for the U.S. And there's, um, you know, the interest on that debt alone is is going to be crazy just the debt servicing and it's going to even surpass military spending so what what do you see there and like how unsustainable is this in the long term jeff all that was foreseen surely by the fed i mean this is one of the right. weird things about our time is that there was a suspension of reality or a willing uh willingness to you know not believe that there was any cause and effect in operating the world over three and a half years it was just let's go crazy and we don't care about the consequences all we want to do is get rid of a virus uh and and by the way one of the worst practitioners of this was israel itself it with uh it became you know sort of the the world center of, of of Pfizer, their vaccine mandates were incredible. I don't know how many boosters and yeah, everything like four that they or five. mandated. Yeah, um, it, it was, uh, and also among lockdown states in the world, Israel was one of the worst. So that massively diverted attention away from the security current concerns, and 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 led to extreme vulnerabilities as we've seen uh, unfold, which has led to you know endless rounds of conflict. But this happened to, to states, you know, all over the world. And, and so the way the Fed was trying to repair the this deeply problematic and potentially ruinous level of inflation was by raising interest rates. But, you know, that's that's kind of a weird and blunt interest instru instrument. I mean, there's no right. way that you can actually suck newly created money out of the economy. I mean, it's not so easy. <laughs> there's no switch to allow that. So the, the interest rate increases, which reversed essentially uh, 16, 17 years of zero interest rate policies that were themselves massively distortive. Um, it, it was going to increase the cost of, for, of, of financing the debt, 
um, and further further break the budget. It, it's not necessarily going to fix inflation. So we've been watching really carefully to see how this would flesh itself out, and and we've been surprised. Uh, yeah. I have to say because um, we did see the money supply rate of increase. Um, fall, or I should say stop rising, and then drift down a little bit. But I, I, last I checked, I think there's uh, the, you know, that, you know, 90% of the newly created money, or 95% of the newly created money since uh, 2021 is still sloshing around. So, you oh. know, M2 hasn't actually fallen that much. So what they're relying on here, and it's a little bit circuitous, the way they imagine this would work is that the uh, the interest rates would uh, dramatically rise, and then that would cause bank lending to fall. Right. And since the banks are the main frontline money creators, uh, that would lead to uh, less money creation and then settle down inflation. But it's it's not an easy trigger, you know. And it's true the bank credit is collapsing. Actually, it's collapsing dramatically, no. but it it doesn't seem to be having a, a, an effect on inflation. I tell you that the numbers. There's been a number of numbers that have come out over the last two weeks that have been tremendously alarming. So the back-to-back -back PPI and then CPI um, show a re-acceleration of inflation over three months. Right. And the first month this happened, it was kind of like, ah, that's not what it's supposed to do. And then it happened again. Well, now it's happened again. And and so you see from the charts a, a reversal of the declines, which has shocked me because when the PPI first went went down earlier this uh, in, in the summer, I thought, okay, finally we're over this. The CPI is going to respond, and you know mm -hmm. you you can't help yourself. You you put a ruler on whatever the existing trend is and say, let's imagine this continues. Uh, one thing I did not imagine. Well, was that it would not that the fall would not continue, but would reverse itself. So this is extremely alarming because it means that uh, a lot of people, including myself, misjudged the situation. Uh, you know, what does it mean uh, to have this level of, of money creation over this shorter period of time combined with the largest, highest rates of increase, you know, ever in the history of the Federal Reserve yeah. uh, as a way to quell it? What would that do to uh, prices themselves and what we've learned is that this stuff is not it's not going anywhere so uh, so both the ppi and the cpi were so grim mm -hmm. when they came out last week that not even the news media could spend it they could spend <laughs> it they're gonna, which is amazing right so for for two years every time two and a half years every time the the, the inflation numbers come out the headlines are well uh, inflation's cooling, it's calming down, it's tending to go away, the transit, right. transitory inflation is again. This time they're just like CPI bumps up 3.2%. CPI yeah, is so that's it. They have, no, they have no excuses anymore. <laughs> yeah, no excuses. So they're not even trying to spin it. So I just wanted to let everyone know about our new sponsor, Strategic Wealth Preservation. They are an international precious metals dealer and they are a secured storage provider that have headquarters in the Cayman Islands. The company owns and operates a large class three UL rated vault in the Grand Caymans, and they offer other strategic locations as part of its global storage network. They specialize in the acquisition, secure storage and liquidation of precious metals for individuals, companies, trusts and wealth management professionals on behalf of their clients. So if you guys want to check them out, the link is in the description below. Um, so that, those, that was really grim data, uh, but then I think maybe it's just a few days before we had this very strange jobs report come out. Mm -hmm. uh, that was an exercise in, in hiding tremendously bad news. So you recall when the jobs report came out, there was universal celebration. Yay. Yeah, yeah, there was. I, I forget how many numbers, the millions of jobs, it's like 350 million or something. Some people, not million, but 350,000. Uh, right. Jobs are created, and it's like, oh, this is beyond any what <laughs> anybody ever imagined, and so on. Well, it took about twenty four hours to people to dig into the data. And by the way, I'm usually good at digging through this uh, the data and just kind of going one layer deep and seeing right. all the lies. This time, it took two and three layers deep, and took no like way. hyper specialists to to <laughs> ferret it out. And it turns out, when you look at the the job data, of course, the unemployment numbers are are completely fake because they don't include all the people that have dropped out of the workforce. And and one guy at the Heritage Foundation pointed out that if you include all the people who uh, have stopped looking for work, uh, that the actual unemployment rate is is closer to. Uh, uh, 
uh, six and seven percent. So that's just by, by itself interesting. But what was most interesting is the double counting that the uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is doing for multiple job holders. Right. So uh, the, the, essentially, there were that you know on that there were no new full time jobs created, but actually lost, and mm -hmm. all of the new jobs that are created on that uh, were uh, second and third jobs. Okay. Right. This is. This is terrible news. This is the, like the grimmest possible jobs report you can ever imagine. Yeah. There was more full-time job losses uh, on record in the most recent report than we saw even, not more, comparable numbers of full-time jobs lost right. in the last month as from uh, uh, March and April 2020. So it was a terrible report. I mean, it's, and and I'm, I'm just telling you, it is not prosperity when people have to take second and third jobs just no. to be able to pay their bills, that, that is, that is just that, that is a, a disaster unfolding before our eyes. And so is fa I'm always interested in the way this stuff is pitched in the media. Right. So the first day it was like, Oh, glorious job creation everywhere. <laughs> Next day, actually two days later, the wall street journal says, well, I wouldn't count on these job creation numbers to sustain themselves, you know, is and the other headline jobs? was like, if, if everything is so good, how come everybody feels so bad? Well, there's a reason you feel so bad. But the, the other problem that this raises is a really more fundamental one, which has to do with whether or not you can, can trust any of these statistics. Right. And I'm I'm coming to realize something extremely important. Ever since lockdowns, uh, the uh, uh, the reporting on economic basic economic data has been shabby. They they cannot get businessmen to, business people to answer questions. Four out of five just throw the sheet in the trash. Right. Um, uh, a shrinkflation is making it impossible to gather CPI data because everybody's hiding. You know their their price yeah. increases in the form of smaller packaging. I did a lot of research on this. There is no way that's counted in the CPI. So you've got no, dramatically not. high inflation, but it's not showing up in the CPI. The jobs numbers are fake. So let's talk about the GDP numbers. I mean, um, since this alleged recovery, we, we've seen increases of 1% and 2% in real terms in GDP, but mm. that's within a, a margin of error. And if you understand something about the way the GDP works, it's massively skewed by public sector spending, by... Uh, uh, by you know the counting, by the ability right. to fair. there's there's no magic machine anywhere that extracts this one number from the economy. So it's very possible that we've seen no GDP growth at all, and that is reflected wow. in the aggregate wage wage hours worked over over the last uh, uh, th three three years, okay. which is the worst we've seen in a century. So I think it's very likely just to say, look, let's admit it. We're in a recession. We never left recession in 2020. So yep. now they say there's not going to be a soft land, they're, they're, that we're going to soft land the economy. Well, you can't soft land something that never took off. So so now it's like we're living in a truly Orwellian times where Paul Krugman, you know, actually says things on his Twitter <laughs> account. Like there is no inflation. We've conquered it. I know. Um, it's crazy. I, I think. There was another article in the in the New York Times today saying that the economy is booming, everything's perfect. How come everybody's so unhappy? Well, we're unhappy because it's not true. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> and that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, like you the, you just absolutely nailed it because if the job numbers or all the numbers of government data is is uh, is distorted, and then you see even inflation data, they don't use the same calculations they did back in the seventies and eighties. Uh, so that's even changed. Uh, it's just, you know, it's absolutely crazy, Jeffrey. Yeah. What's next? Yeah. What, what happens to silver and gold? I forgot to ask you about that. <laughs> um, you know, I think it, my answer is the same as it always is on this. Right. I mean, we're, we're seeing a, we're going to see for sure, see a flight to, to real things. Now, right. part of the problem here is that uh, disc discretionary spending is, is uh, kind of depleted, you know? Uh, so we would have expected huge increases in, in bank balances in the form of savings during a period of rising interest rates. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that because people don't have the money. They're already committed to their debt and they're having to service their debt. So there's there's no chance of an increase in savings. In fact, okay. savings are falling right now and debt is increasing during a time of rising interest rates, which violates everything you would ever think the price system would would do. Right. Um, but there's going to come a time, and it's and it's coming soon, where households are going to feel a sense of, of grave emergency. 
especially mm-hmm. with the onset of CBDCs, and and you're going to see a flight to uh, to gold and silver. I mean, I think those are going to be yeah. emergency times. I don't see any uh, any chance of of dramatic declines in in these price structures. I think they're only headed up, maybe not in the near term, but long term. Right. One interesting and very telling fact is we're seeing. A very and so far as you can trust the data again, that's always a proviso <laughs> these days. Uh, but a a big increase in the use of cash that's right. fascinating to me, and uh, and a huge uh, number of of retailers are now offering discounts for cash, which is something we didn't see five mm. years. So you see things are changing. There's an, a change in the ethos away from old oh, normal times. Let's use our stimulus money to 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 buy GameStop. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm uh, sure people uh, did that too and, and made money. <laughs> damn right. That's a great movie, by the way. I recommend it to all your uh viewers to watch this wonderful movie called Dumb Money. It's just an exceptional uh yeah, film. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. It's an exceptional film about finance. It really captures the sort of class revolt at the heart. It was it, it all took place between really? 2020 and 2021. Brilliant story. But you know, here you have all these basically the stories that all these people are sitting out as the stimulus money and nothing to do with it. So they're checking out their red subreddits and going to Wall Street bets and throwing <laughs> money into GameStop, you know, because some punk online says to do it. And yeah, you know, that's awesome. And they bankrupted all sorts of hedge funds. It was just a hilarious, I mean, uh, amazing story. But that kind of discretionary money is not that that only happened because people were flooded with cash. They, people right. are not flooded with cash. That, all that right. is no gone spending. Yeah. through through uh, through uh, spending and also through uh, inflation. So, you know, it's a it's a major problem for American households. But at some point, you know, if the war increases, uh, keeps keeps going. It's been more or less delayed for a week, and I'm not sure why that is, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, with oil price pressures going up, inflation not going away, at some point the whole system is going to crack. I mean, the good aspect of this is it means that CBDCs don't seem to be an immediate threat, at least yeah, for, yeah. Now. for now. For now, off <laughs> for a little while, but. Um, that the flight to real is is definitely Absolutely. something we can look forward to. Absolutely, Jeffrey. It's been such a like every time you come down, it's such a huge pleasure to talk to you because you you hit on the way you explained it. Uh, I'm sure our viewers would uh, are absolutely going to love it because I did. So thank you so much for coming down to Wall Street Silver, and hopefully in the near future we'll have you back on in a month or so, and we'd love to see your take. So you never know what could happen in another month. Look what happened in the past month. I know it's there's always new things to, about which to, we can speak. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Jeffrey. And where can people contact you? brownstone.org is my best place i also write for epoch times every day awesome perfect thank you so much jeffrey my pleasure 